Hello, everybody. Welcome to Behind the Mic. Gary Laubach and Mike Joseph. Lafayette coming off a loss, which really was a tough loss. They did not play well in that football game. And, Mike, I think this was a good example with Holy Cross of getting a win but learning a lesson. And I think that's what happened to them against Lehigh. Yes. They were a much different team playing Lafayette. Yeah, and I think that was somewhat of a wake-up call for them that they didn't play well at Lehigh and uh, was 14-12 at halftime. So, you know, when they came home, I think uh, they had everything going in their, their direction, and that was obviously being at home. Mm -hmm. um, they had the two quarterbacks playing well at the time, one that can run, one that can throw, but they both seemed to throw the ball pretty well. Um, and then the defense for them just really turned it up, and Lafayette had no answers. They had no answers offensive line-wise for protection. Um, they had no answers uh, in the kicking game again. They had one bad punt that turned into uh, mm -hmm. points. Um, but at 14-7 to at halftime, I thought, okay, well, Lafayette's weathered the storm. Maybe they can take this into the second half, but their offense just really couldn't move the football. So the Patriot League Championship will come down probably to this week when Fordham will take on Holy Cross. Both of those teams are undefeated. Obviously, it is Colgate as they will be rooting for Fordham to win this yeah. ball game because, ironically, a team picked to finish seventh in the league right now is is in the hunt for the Patriot League Championship. Uh, yeah, they are, which is kind of strange. This this uh, this league is really strange, you know. Um, but yeah, it's all going to come down to uh, that big game, and I think it it should be. I think they're both the best teams. Mm -hmm. They've played well all the way through the season. You look at their overall records. I mean, Holy Cross is seven and two, right. a really nice record. And Fordham's played really well away from home, not only at home. Um, and obviously, that that loss here at forty two forty one really stings. Um, you know, so but it's it, it, there's some good football players. There's guys standing out in the league like t uh, Tim D. Murad, obviously 25 touchdown passes. Um, you know, us throwing only five touchdown passes right now. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's really we're just not finding the end zone enough. And, and against a Colgate team that we beat here back in the spring, right. we got to take that. We got to look at that film, find ways that we can move the football. And defensively, you know, our defensive front seven is really struggling to stop the run. That's an issue. Yeah, no question. I, I think the line of scrimmage was the real key on Saturday. We did not control either side of the football. So Colgate comes in with a lot of incentive. Win this football game, watch the scoreboard, uh, hope for a, a win here by, uh, by Fordham. And they've got themselves a shot at, at least a share of the Patriot League Championship when they play Fordham next week. This is a good football team, understand DeCosti. He's done a nice job. You know, not easy to replace Dick Biddle. In fact, uh, Colgate just honored Dick Biddle this past weekend with uh, naming all kinds of things after him, and rightfully so, as he won 137 games up there. The, the perplexing thing here is I'm not quite sure about the quarterback situation. We know Grant Brenneman is as good as they come. I mean, five years in the league, he's got good numbers. But last week it was Mike Brescia that played. And I went back, tried to look for their game notes, and just couldn't find any reason why Brenneman didn't play. Yeah. Brescia, in fact, rookie of the week because he had a great ball game. Uh, but Brenneman now is listed as a starter. Yeah, and I don't know if they're playing games or what because Brenneman has always given us trouble. Mm -hmm. um, last year uh, we got the best of him, but in years past – um, he's always been a problem for us. And again, they're running the zone read. Okay, this is something that we really haven't seen since really way back early in the season against Air Force, and that's really not the zone read. That's mm -hmm. the flex. Mm -hmm. Um, but he's always given us problems. Running quarterbacks have given us problems. We saw that last week with Saluka. Right. Couldn't tackle the guy. So, um, you know, Lafayette's got to have to hone in on their run defense. Stop the run. Make them one-dimensional. I really I think that's the big key to it. Make Whether, whether it's Brenneman or Brescia, because Brescia ran the ball really well, too. Yeah. He runs the offense. And this is a team, I always talk about it, that doesn't dabble in the zone read. They read the nose. They read the linebacker. They read the safety. They're going to make you – Hold your disguise as long as you can. If you're going to add an extra guy to the box, they're going to try to, you know, RPO you over the top. A lot of pressure on the uh, the uh, secondary. We didn't have Jordan Anderson last week. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was a big, big, big negative right there, um, and that hurt us uh, at the corner position. But. Um, you know, whether it's Brenneman or whether it's Brescia, you got your hands full. Well, Mike makes a great point. Normally for Colgate, the leading rusher on their team is their quarterback. And that is the case right now. Brenneman is actually the leading rusher, and Brescia had a good rushing game last week. Hurlman and Cox are their running backs. They're very good. Uh, they do the RPO very, very well. They throw the ball to Garrett Oakley, who's been around for a while, and Miles Bradley, two very good receivers. Yeah, um, the, some of these kids, I'm waiting for them to, to leave. <laughs> I'm waiting for them to, to uh, retire, I say no but graduate and get out of here but they can throw the football you can't take any part of their offense um, um, for granted you have to be able to I think stop the best thing they do and that's run the zone read so uh, and they're and they're getting better up front their offensive line really struggled early in the year mm -hmm. they don't give up a lot of sacks 
Um, but Lafayette has had a tendency to be able to get into the backfield with Ham and, uh, and Marco Olivas and Major Jordan and some of our D linemen to penetrate, get some tackles for losses, get them behind the sticks. They're a team that they don't play well from second and 11 and third and 11. That's not their thing. They want to stay third and one, second and four. That's where they want to be. If you can get them off schedule, you can definitely do some damage, uh, and I think that's the key defensively. And when you look at their numbers, they give up an equal amount of passing yardage as they do rushing yardage. So we've said all year about how we need balance. They sort of allow balance if, uh, if you can go and take it. Yeah, and when you're getting behind like Lafayette is, 14 nothing, 17 nothing, it takes away some of your running game. You can't really rely on you know, getting that one touchdown staying in the ball game. They need to get a better, off better running the football. That takes pressure off your freshman quarterback. That takes guys don't can't pin their ears back and get 42 sacks against the Leopards this year. This, that, that just can't happen. So running the ball is going to be key. I expect Lafayette to get back to that. Selwyn Simpson's got to be healthy. You know, I think Sutton's getting better. They didn't use Michael Hayes a lot at all in the game which was strange I talk about inside the huddle this week screen and draw take the pressure off make those linemen think about two things not just rushing the passer but the fact that Lafayette can drop the ball over the top screen and draw is going to be big take some pressure off of them always like to look at some positives coming out of a ball game obviously uh, Jair Stevens had a terrific ball game 17 ta- or 15 tackles Marco Olivas with 13 Major Jordan with a one arm interception pick six so uh, obviously the linebackers did a good job yeah they they're all over the place and and, and we're missing Billy Schaefer last mm-hmm. week you know if Billy Schaefer plays in that game might be a little bit different um, and take some of that pressure, but you saw Jair Stevens step up. He's a great athlete, long, got the length, got the speed, plays on his feet, does a lot of uh, different things. But uh, you know, the, some of these seniors up front, like Malik, they got to realize they got two games left. It's time to turn it up, turn it on, get after the quarterback, and uh, and do the things that they've done for four years on the hill. Uh, but that linebacking crew, you can't got to give Major Jordan a lot of credit. He picks the ball off, he runs for a touchdown, shows you speed. Marco Olivas is a little bit beat up, I think. Even though he's still got those tackles, he didn't play exceptionally well downhill like he normally plays. He was a little beat up. Uh, and I think that defense is kind of worn out a little bit. So they're going to need a break. The offense is going to have to score points. Much like we always do when we talk, Mike kind of leads me right into my last point. Last point is we can't look ahead. 157 nope. coming up. It's Lehigh. You've got to beat Colgate first. Yeah, you got to be. And, and this is your last home game. This is your senior day. You, this is the day that it's, it's got to take over. This is a special day. This is the last time you're putting those pads on here at Fisher Stadium. That means a lot for all these seniors. That's got to be number one. Get this win for the seniors. Don't look ahead against the team like Lehigh who's playing much, much better. And that game three weeks ago, we thought, hey, we got Lehigh this year. We're going to go over there. We're going to blow their doors in. At this point in time, that is not a Lehigh team that was playing five weeks ago. Well, it's been a month since we've been up in the booth, maybe a little bit over a month, but we will be there at 1230 this Saturday when Lafayette takes on Colgate. We'll be also there for the 157th two weeks from now. So we invite you to join us. And for now, we thank you for joining us on Behind the Mic.